It's time for Roses and Rosé. I don't have my blanket and we don't have Peter Krause. You guys, what a finale. I literally can't find my rose blanket that I usually hold up and it's just one of many reasons that I'm so distraught tonight. Okay. The Bachelorette finale was Monday night and Rachel Lindsay had told me that it would be emotional, but I did not realize how emotional it would be. Oh my God. So much to discuss. Three hour live finale for the first time ever. Was it necessary? I don't really think so. We just wanted to see what happened, you know? So let's, I don't know, maybe, maybe table that for next year. I don't think we needed to do that. Okay, but Rachel looks great and things get pretty rough. So she, the guys are backstage, they look great. Peter without a tie, hi Peter. So in the next, basically week at this point, what if I'm not ready to say, will you marry me? Okay, so back to Rachel and Peter in the fantasy suite because that's where we were left off, halfway through their fantasy suite. I've done this before. I had a five-year relationship that I thought was moving towards marriage that never left the girlfriend-boyfriend stage. So Rachel brings up this like apparent five-year relationship she had where she was uh, told by this guy that marriage was gonna happen and then it never did. And how do I know that it'll leave that girlfriend and boyfriend stage with Peter? Is it just me or this is is it just me or is this like the first time that we've heard about this relationship? I don't ever remember her mentioning it, but it seems to be very traumatic. That's why I'm overwhelmed with emotion. So she's like, Peter, that's why, you know, this is so hard for me. Overwhelmed with emotion. But Peter's like, I don't want to let you go. And they're like, let's use the fantasy suite to talk to each other. And they get in their fantasy suite and Peter's like, well. Oh, this is super cute. This is super cute. And I'm like, Peter, another reason for me to love you? You comment on the decor? I love you. So they have their fantasy suite and we get a little bit of shirtlessness, but not enough, we never get enough. And then Peter's like, the feelings of doubt are still there. The, the, the feelings of doubt that I have have started to fade. They're not gone, but they've definitely started to fade. So we see where this is gonna go. Downhill, everybody, downhill. Oh, but even walking away, he's so cute. His hair's kind of messy. He looks like, like a shacker or something. He's just like so cute. Woo! Uh, back to Brian. Brian's in a red Henley that flaps open in the wind. He makes such interesting fashion choices. And Rachel is like so clearly thinking about Peter this whole date, you know? Peter messed with my mind and I'm struggling. Brian's like, today was awkward. It didn't go the way I wanted to. Just, I don't know, just awkward because she's thinking about Peter. Here's what was painful, is that throughout the episode, it seemed to me as a fan that Rachel had stronger feelings for Peter, but knew that Brian had stronger feelings for her. Peter dropped a bomb on me. Am I the only one who felt that way? I don't wanna feel that way, but that's how I came across. I wish Rachel and Brian the best, I really do. But it. It was awkward. Chris Harrison is like Rachel. What is it like to go from an emotional roller coaster with Peter, a very difficult date, mm -hmm. right into Brian, equally difficult? No, it wasn't. She knows exactly how Brian feels about her. So what is the struggle with Brian? It's not like she's down to her final two and she doesn't know, you know, which one she maybe like has the, the more clear connection with. Pete, you see the standstill that I was yeah. with Peter and I just kind of was like, you know, what am I doing? It seems that it's just like, this guy's not that into me, and, and this guy, this one guy, Brian, I don't really have any problems with. I, I can't figure out what problem she has with Brian. She, she, she doesn't seem to have any. I love you. But they ended up together, so that's great, that's great. <sighs> I'm so stressed out, you guys. I'm having such a hard time gathering my feelings right now because I'm about to go fly to New York to interview Rachel and Brian. Check it out soon on etonline.com. Shameless vlog. So, by the way, Drink every time Rachel, there, my own hair is in. Could more go wrong? Could more go wrong? I'm about to get into Peter and Rachel's real argument, so yes. But to be back at the place that I've been at before. Drink every time Rachel brings up this relationship we're hearing for the, about for the first time. And drink every time Peter says he doubts. Doubt that I have. His feelings for Rachel. And you know, you're gone. 
breathe. <sighs> it's hard to breathe right now. Notice she hasn't mentioned Eric for like the whole first hour. So we know what's gonna happen. Why Eric? All of this feels surreal. This is the last rose ceremony. We get a shot of a tombstone. That's pretty foreboding. And Rachel is wearing like literal armor because of what she's going through. You're never ready for the goodbye. And Eric and Peter and Brian are there and Eric's rocking some cool sneakers, but bye Eric. I like Eric a lot though. Are you happy? I'm very happy. Okay. How are you? He was on live and he was great and he was like, Rachel, I just hope your heart is good and I'm always gonna care about you. And like, he looked really great with his beard. And so like, great, Eric, great. I don't know if Eric's gonna be The Bachelor, but I like Eric. Peter is like, Rachel wants me to propose. Oh yeah, but after Eric gets where, where were we? Oh, then Peter and Brian each have one more date. Is this the normal format? I, it's all screwed up because there's three dudes in the finale and it's, it's live, I'm very confused. So please, you know, drink every time I screw up the format. Mm -hmm. So back to Peter and Rachel, they have one more date. And, oh no, Brian and Peter. Brian and, see what I mean, drink, I screwed it up. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I said Brian and Peter. Mm -hmm. Rachel and Brian get one more date, everybody. Oh God. Again, there's no question about Brian. I just want to focus on Brian. And that's all, all we're again told from this date. Brian loves her. I love you, I'm in love with you, and I wanna be with you forever. He loves her so much. Now on to the one-on-one -on -one with Peter. So this is different. It's a different vibe. It's a different, more heartbreaking, soul-wrenching, body-gutting, personality-depleting. Today I'm feeling insecure. Love, soul-sucking. And unsure. And just, no way anymore after watching this. It was the most captivating 10 minutes of television ever. You only became married? Not married. Not married. Sometime. <laughs> Fight me on that. The ending of The Sopranos. Don't stop. The finale of Breaking Bad. The, I don't know, any other, fight me on this. The most captivating 10 minutes of television in the history of time was Peter Krause and Rachel Lindsay's last date. Just wondering. <laughs> wondering what? I don't know, about life. So, Peter's wearing green at first, which like, why didn't you wear gray, Peter? I mean, I don't even recognize you. And he's like, the feelings of doubt are still there. But these feelings are so recent. Oh God, and then we go to the nighttime where we get the golden TV moments that are so hard to watch. Rachel is walking to see Peter and she looks like she doesn't even want to like get there. And I keep looking for clarity and I'm just not getting it. But she gets there and she's wearing gray and he's wearing gray. And for the first time they acknowledge that they are matching. Look at this, look at the matching. We really are matching. <laughs> and it's so ironic because tonight will be the night that they are not a match anymore. The goal tonight is to leave knowing where he stands and for him to know where I stand. My eyes are actually tearing up now and I really cried watching this. I have never cried watching this show. I love this show, but I have never cried watching it. Until tonight. Yeah, it gets intense quickly. And I'm gonna make one joke before I get into the seriousness of it. There's one part where Rachel's like, you tell me how serious you wanna be and you're like talking about the size of our bed and dogs. If there's one thing that it, is an indication that a relationship is gonna get serious is if you're talking about dogs and the size of your bed. What's that discussion? It can't be very long. I'm too tall for a queen, I need a king. Okay. Is there a lot of back and forth on that? I don't think so. And I'm in this because I want someone who wants what I want. I want someone who wants to move towards marriage. Basically, Rachel's like, I need, I don't understand if you are into me and you wanna be with me and you see our future together, why can't you propose? And Peter's like, I have one opportunity at it and I wanna make sure that it's the right one. You don't have one, one opportunity. And she's like, no you don't. And he's like, I choose to have one opportunity and that is my choice. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Peter laying it down. So scary, so sad, so sexy. And then you think it's over, but Peter, whoa, Peter backtracks. We're not breaking up. You don't wanna take the risk. 
and he's like, I care about you so much that I will propose just to show you that I care about you. You would do it completely out of fear. I'd be doing it for you. Oh my God. I did not see that coming. I thought Peter Krause was gonna stand firm and maybe that's how things would end. See what I mean? But no, he really cared about her. He was like- I would do it for you to prove to you that I want to pursue this relationship. She's like, no, I don't want to make you do it. I don't want to. Then, You're doing it then, out of peer then, pressure. <laughs> and, and like, but she had kind of wanted him to do it and he's like, I don't know what you want from me. Then, then, then we just have to split right here now. Is that what you want? No. And like, before you know it, they are crying and kissing and kissing and crying and their tears are in their mouths. And Rachel's trying to walk away, but she's like, I don't want to walk away. And Peter's holding her arm because he doesn't want her to walk away. It's like a literal tugging and backing and forthing of their conversation and their relationship and their likable, compatible personalities that are also so different. Ah! Relationships in 2017, am I right? So, Ultimately, you know, they, they, they break up, they break up, it's over. And Peter is like alone to the room. I always thought he said this to Rachel in the promos, but alone to the room, he's like, what's wrong with me? What is wrong with me? Ah, oh. oh my God. Oh, it's Peter, just kidding. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, and he says to her, Go find someone to have a mediocre life with. Because I would have given you an amazing life. You would have. Ah. And he puts her coat on for her, and he's like, I wish you the best. It's just, there's so much. It's so painful, and it was such a real, real breakup to watch. It was so hard. I was on the edge of my seat. 10 most captivating minutes of television. So again, they're live for three hours because, okay. And they cut to Peter like crouching by a trunk of like stage equipment. Oh my God, what a cutaway. Some, the producer was like, move that camera over here. I don't know if they have walkie talkies. So then Peter is on stage with Rachel and it is almost just as painful. They haven't seen each other since May. But Peter said he was just crying backstage and Rachel seemed so frustrated. And Rachel then, I gotta say, I love Rachel, but I think she was trying to make it seem like she didn't care about Peter maybe as much as the show was making her seem as though she did. She was like, it wasn't really about that you weren't proposing, it was more about something else. But it seems like it was about that he wasn't proposing. And then, I don't, I just don't think like this, this world, this process, this journey, this, this show, like, I just don't think like it's for you. Rachel tried to kill his bachelor moment. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I see what you're doing, Rachel Lindsay. Rachel actually told me in an interview that she didn't want any of her top four guys to be The Bachelor. Shameless blood. And we witnessed it live on Monday night. Rachel said, I don't think this show is for you. Like, you need more time. You need to like see things through. To Peter. Please don't take him from us, Rachel. I know it didn't work out with you two, but please don't take him from the people. Do you guys remember on their last date on the finale when he said, I'm picturing us, I'm picturing us going to the farmer's market. Wine night with painting. What man says that? The most perfect man wants to go to the farmer's market with you. Rachel, please don't take him from us. She's like, I don't think the show's for you. I think you need more time. I don't think this format's for you. <gasps> Last for me, Rachel. Onward and upward. And things end. Now we gotta take our emotions from down here at a negative 72 to whoa, up at a 10, because we've still got a proposal to watch. Back to the happiness. Brian and Rachel. Brian goes to propose. He's like, I love you. And she's like, I love you. Oh, I forgot to mention something. Rachel told Peter she loved him. You guys. Oh. Anyway, but she doesn't care about him. Reminder, she didn't care. And she told him live, she said, oh, he apologized for saying that she would have a mediocre life with whoever she picked. And she was like, yeah. I'm living my best life. Cheers to Rachel for living her best life. So Brian knows what he wants. Rachel, Lynn, Lindsay, will you be my Raina forever? So pretty, yes! Marry me. He proposes, Rachel is so happy, and they are so happy on After the Final Rose, and it was 
quite a joy to watch because let's all remember Nick Vile and Vanessa Grimaldi's after the final rose, which was, in a word, painful. Or maybe in another word, tense. Rachel and Brian were not tense. They were so cute all over each other. And um, Brian still, so into Rachel, he was like, well, she, we're thinking about a winter wedding. And she was like, you know, we're not rushing anything. Like, we just want to see, like, build our lives together. Pause. Okay. This was interesting. Chris asked Rachel. When did you know? Ooh. Well, most people would say during hometowns, my hometown. Right. And I don't know about that because she told Peter she loved him on the last day. Okay, nothing to say about that. What an amazing season of The Bachelorette, you guys. And oh my God. This summer on Bachelor in Paradise. <gasps> the Bachelor in Paradise promo. <gasps> they gave us a promo of Bachelor in Paradise, which premieres next Monday, August 14th and Tuesday, August 15th on ABC. And we will be doing roses and rose about paradise right here. Yes, I drink wine once a week now for work. I'm okay with it. So they show this promo with the first footage of Corinne and Demario in the pool incident. Oh my God. Dang, they're going there. Can't wait to watch. So many congrats to Rachel and Brian, truly. I think Brian was a good guy and he just showed Rachel how much he loved her all season. And Rachel is a woman again who knows what she wants and kept it 100 all season. She was an amazing bachelorette, wishing them the best. Can't wait to interview them both tomorrow and it will be up at etonline.com. And you know what else is going up tomorrow? My reasons why Peter should be The Bachelor. Yeah, I wrote an article about it. Journalism, Pulitzer, other journalism awards. I can't think of any others, but please give them to me for this listicle. And please let me know your thoughts. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here all season. Please make sure to like ET on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. You can follow me on social media and we can keep talking about this finale if you want because it was truly mind boggling. I gotta go catch a flight now. Bye! So, uh, oh God, it's trying to send an email <laughs> to Peter. Just kidding, I don't have his email address. Somebody get it for me.